Well, let's quickly move on now to some developing news. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has spoken to Russia's Vladimir Putin earlier today. There's been a statement from the External Affairs Ministry, also a statement from the Kremlin. Interestingly, both sides discussed not just uh, the recent situation of an armed mercenary mutiny in Russia, but also the situation in Ukraine. Joining us now for more on that, my colleague Maha Siddiqui. Maha, what did they actually talk about? Well, uh, the statements on both sides, if you read them, uh, uh, they seem to suggest that the call was about uh, the SCO summit, the virtual summit that is going to take place next week on Tuesday, as well as G20. Apart from that, of course, uh, uh, the rebellion that took place and how it was handled. But interestingly, Vishnu, uh, there's one important point that has emerged in the Kremlin statement. It seems to suggest that uh, Prime Minister Modi, and these are words from the Kremlin statement that I'm quoting, informed uh, the president about his foreign contacts as well, uh, including his visit to Washington, D.C. However, the Indian statement makes no mention of this. In fact, the Indian statement mentions that on the issue of Ukraine, Prime Minister Modi reiterated the call for dialogue and diplomacy. So here are two statements that seem to be suggesting two uh, different sets of things that both sides discussed. However, uh, the call was made and we know that next week is the SCO virtual summit and therefore this call does become important in that context and also in the context of the first big challenge that President Putin had faced only last week. All right, Maha, thanks very much for sharing those details with us. An important phone conversation between Prime Minister Modi and Russia's Vladimir Putin. In other news, the Tamil Nadu governor R.N. Ravi paused within five hours an unprecedented move late last night to unilaterally sack the arrested minister Senthil Balaji after the union home minister Amit Shah's intervention. Two letters accessed exclusively by NDTV reveal this. After a five-page letter citing its constitutional right to dismiss the minister overriding the state's DMK government, the governor retracted the highly controversial decision in a one-page letter referring to the advice from the union home minister that it would be prudent to seek legal opinion. In the first letter, exclusively accessed by NDTV, the governor told CM Stalin that I am conscious of the fact that under ordinary circumstances, a governor acts on the aid and advice of the Council of Ministers. However, in the instant case, your advice, or to put it more appropriately, your insistence to retain V. Senthil Balaji against my advice as a member of the Council of Ministers reflects your unhealthy bias. Under such circumstances and the powers conferred to me under Articles 154, 163 and 164 of the Constitution of India, I hereby dismiss V. Senthil Balaji from the Council of Ministers with immediate effect. The second letter, just five hours later, the Governor said, I have been advised by the Honourable Union Minister of Home Affairs that it would be prudent to seek the opinion of the Attorney General also. Accordingly, I am approaching the Attorney General for his opinion. Meanwhile, the order of dismissal of the Minister V. Senthil Balaji may be kept in abeyance until further communication from me. The Chief Minister has said the Governor has no powers to dismiss a Minister, something many constitution experts agree with. The Honourable Chief Minister has rightly disregarded his letter, has rightly shown the place where it has to be. The letter is ab initio wide. It need not be acted upon. It can be disregarded. That is what the government has done today. The latest round of confrontation started on Thursday evening with the Governor unilaterally passing an order dismissing Senthil Balaji from the State Cabinet against the recommendations of the Chief Minister who wanted to retain him as a Minister without portfolio after he was arrested two weeks ago by the Enforcement Directorate in an alleged money laundering case. The Honourable Chief Minister now, the MK Stalin, the as opposition leader, has categorically requested the Honourable Governor then in 2016 and 18 to dismiss a minister from the ADMK government. Now in 2023, he calls this a constitutional crisis. Sources say after governor's letters, Tamil Nadu Chief Minister M.K. Stalin consulted senior leaders of the party and legal experts and responded to the governor in a letter calling his decision unconstitutional and illegal and has further stated that Sindhil Balaji continues to remain a minister without portfolio in his cabinet. With camera person Ashok Mahale, this is Arvind Gunasekar for NDTV. Well, R.N. Ravi, the Tamil Nadu governor, is in the midst of a huge battle with the DMK government and has been, uh, in terms of a background, a police officer and an intelligence bureau official. He's now very much in the centre of the news. We thought we'd do this profile report of his background. 
while Governor R. N. Ravi may have sent shockwaves across the political circles with his hugely controversial decision of sacking a minister, here's a look at who R. N. Ravi is. Born in Patna, Bihar, the current Tamil Nadu Governor R. N. Ravi graduated as a Masters in Physics in 1974. He joined the Indian Police Service in 1976 and served in Kerala Kada for over a decade. During his service in the Intelligence Bureau, he served largely in regions of violence, including in Jammu and Kashmir and the Northeast. In 2014, he was appointed as the Chairman of Joint Intelligence Committee at Prime Minister's office. In 2018, he was appointed as the Deputy National Security Advisor. After he retired from IB, in 2019, R. N. Ravi was appointed as the Governor of Nagaland. In 2021, R. N. Ravi took charge as the governor of Tamil Nadu. Well, protesters in Imphal arrived in huge numbers at the Manipur Chief Minister N. Biren Singh's residence to stop him from heading to the governor's residence as reports of him having decided to hand in his resignation spread among his supporters. This on a day when the Congress leader Rahul Gandhi met the Manipur governor, wrapping up his two-day visit to the state. I will not resign. This is what Manipur Chief Minister BJP's N. Birain Singh, under fire for his handling of Manipur's ethnic clashes, tweeted after a day of high drama. As his supporters blocked the gates of the CM house in Imphal to prevent Mr. Singh from going to the Raj Bhavan to put in his papers. We are all gathered here because we want to say to the, we want to request to the CM Birain not to resign. So, this work is not resign. It's not the right time. Uh, for him to be resigned. It's not the right time for him to resign from his CM seat because if a leader of a state leaves behind his people in the chaos of, in, in, the, in the middle of the chaos and the confusion without resolving the ongoing conflict, where will we go? The continuing violent situation in Manipur had led to speculation that Manipur Chief Minister N. Biren Singh may resign from his post. This led to a huge crowd of supporters led by women and youth gathering here at his residence. At the time that the chief minister tried to leave his residence, he was stopped by his supporters and cancelled his trip to the Raj Bhavan in a day of political developments in Manipur. The drama outside the chief minister's house took place on day two of Congress leader Rahul Gandhi's visit to the state. Mr. Gandhi called on the Manipur governor and appealed for peace. ये यहां मैं कोई राजनीतिक स्टेटमेंट करने नहीं आया हूं मैं इन चीजों पे कमेंट नहीं करूंगा मैं सिर्फ चाहता हूं कि यहां पे जल्दी से जल्दी शांति आए आई केम हियर बिकॉज़ आई वांटेड टू शेयर द पेन ऑफ द पीपल ऑफ मणिपुर इट इज ए हॉरिबल ट्रेजेडी दैट हैज टेकन प्लेस वेरी एक्सट्रीमली सैड एंड पेनफुल फॉर ऑल द पीपल ऑफ मणिपुर एंड ऑल द पीपल ऑफ इंडिया एज वेल Earlier in the day, Rahul Gandhi visited a relief camp in Moirang and spoke to those affected by the violence. He also met representatives of civil society organizations before leaving for Delhi. But over 120 people have died in Manipur since May and with the state still seeing violent clashes and deaths in the last two days, the road to peace is challenging. An NDTV Bureau report. A contentious central order that sought to take control of Delhi's bureaucracy skirting a Supreme Court verdict has been challenged by the Delhi government and the Supreme Court in the latest escalation of a bitter feud. The Delhi government, led by Arvind Kejriwal's Ahmadmi Party, has filed a petition challenging the constitutionality of the ordinance, which was introduced by the BJP-led centre and establishes the National Capital Civil Service Authority to manage the transfer and disciplinary proceedings against Group A officers in Delhi. As the countdown for the 2024 Lok Sabha elections begin, political parties have buckled up for the final showdown. Some key questions loom. Will the opposition's unity triumph or will the ruling BJP remain dominant? My colleague Akhilesh Sharma breaks down the BJP's strategy for 2024. 
Well, the BJP is gearing up uh, for the upcoming Lok Sabha elections 2024 and there have been series of meetings and in one of the meetings, the BJP has chucked out a detailed plan for the micromanagement of his campaign. According to BJP sources, the BJP has prepared three zones from the point of view of the organization. North, South and East zones, these three zones have been created across the country and states like Jammu Kashmir, Ladakh, Himachal Pradesh, Punjab, Chandigarh, Rajasthan, Gujarat, Daman, Diu, Dada, Nagar, Haveli, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Uttar Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Delhi, Haryana. These all states and UTs have been placed in the north zone. Then there is east zone that will have states like Bihar, Jharkhand, Odisha, West Bengal, Assam, Sikkim, Arunachal Pradesh, Nagaland, Manipur, Mizoram, Meghalaya and Tripura. And while south zone will have states like Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Puducherry, Karnataka, Telangana, Andhra Pradesh, Maharashtra, Mumbai, Goa, and Nicobar and Lakshadweep. All these are just specifically for the organizational purpose and separate meetings of all these three regions will be held from July 6th till July 8th. And meeting of East on 6th of July, North on 7th of July and South Zone meeting will be held on 8th of July. The East Zone meeting will be held in Guwahati. The North Zone meeting will be held on July 7 in Delhi and the South Zone meeting will be held uh, on July 8th in Hyderabad. In all these uh, meetings, prominent leaders of that region will be present along with the BJP President J.P. Nadda and uh, Chief Ministers, uh, Deputy Chief Ministers and Organization General Secretaries and also Ministers and other office bearers of respective states will be present in these meetings. In charge of the respective states, State Presidents, Organization Ministers, Chief Minister, Deputy CM, MPs, MLAs and members, other of the national executives, they will also be present in these meetings and BJP will decide different strategy and issues for all these areas. So, there will be a common thread in all the regions, but of course, there will be local issues that will be prominent and that BJP will uh, make a strategy to highlight those particular issues uh, concerning those particular states or the region. The thinking is, of course, that the local issue should be highlighted and this way election campaign can be done better. This is the BJP's feeling and, of course, the new responsibilities will be given to the concerned leaders in these meetings. The Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath today handed over keys to 76 flats built for the poor on land confiscated from the murderer turned, murderer gangster turned politician Atik Ahmed in Prayagraj. The flats were built under the Pradhan Mantri Abbas Yojana and were allotted through a lottery on the 9th of June. A home for the poor allotment in Uttar Pradesh's Prayagraj with a twist. Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath handed over ownership documents to the urban poor for flats built on land seized from murdered gangster Atik Ahmed. The chief minister had laid the foundation stone for the project in December last year. According to officials, each flat covers an area of 41 square meters and has two rooms, a kitchen and a toilet. Over 6,000 people had applied to the Prayagraj Development Authority for the flats and 1,590 people were found eligible to participate in the allotment lottery process. In April this year, Atik, who faced at least 100 criminal cases, and his brother Ashraf Ahmed were shot dead on camera while they were being taken for a medical checkup in Prayagraj. They were in the custody of the Uttar Pradesh police at the time. With Nitin Gupta, this is Alok Pandey, NDTV. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has participated at Delhi University Centenary Celebrations today and also inaugurated DU's BTEC courses that the university will start offering from this year. Before that, he rode a metro and spoke to students about uh, the various OTT shows that they watched and the reels that they missed. Which film did you see? OTT is a good series. Did you see the reels or not? And the story is a good story. That's why 
मैं भी आज आपकी ही तरह दिल्ली मेट्रो से अपने युवा दोस्तों से गपशप करते करते यहां पहुंचा हूं फ्रॉम शाहरुख खान टू अमिताभ बच्चन एंड फ्रॉम अरुण जेटली टू शशि थरूर द लिस्ट ऑफ डेली यूनिवर्सिटीज एलुमनाई इज लॉन्ग एंड इम्प्रेसिव Prime Minister Narendra Modi who himself is a graduate from DU spoke at length about how the institution has been recording history all the 100 years that it has been around from Gandhi Edwin Pact to Bhagat Singh's trial Delhi University buildings have seen it all and while DU itself was established in 1922 with just 3 colleges and 750 students it has now grown to 90 colleges and over 6 lakh students making it the largest central university in india america ki micron google tatha applied materials jaisi companies ne bharat mein bade nivesh ka faisla liya hai कल तक ए और ए आर के जो किस्से हम साइंस फिक्शन फिल्मों में देखते थे वो अब आज हमारी रियल लाइफ का हिस्सा बन रहे हैं आगे प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदी एम्फोसाइज ऑन इस रीसेंट यूएस विजिट एंड टॉक अबाउट हाउ कोलैबोरेशन इन ए आई एंड इमर्जिंग टेक्नोलॉजीज विल हेल्प स्टूडेंट्स यूनिवर्सिटीज ही सेट will have to make their students future ready however the students of du like the fact that the pm talked the most about their favorite momo centers tea shops the ott shows they watched and the insta reels they missed he uh, told about some momo center in satyaniketan and the sudama tea stall in north campus as well so that were exactly the references we were also like we hang out with our friends there also so we literally found it amazing that uh, he told us that he uh, came here today by metro colleges of du also put together an exhibition showcasing the best of their projects some of which are being made industry ready while incubator is already present in du the colleges made it a point to showcase social inclusion and social awareness so we have created the first ever branch of mitti cafe in delhi we will be providing them with requisite training and then employing them in other chains of mitti cafe that we would be setting up in say delhi ncr and other regions so that is what makes us up environment and waste management seem the most important focus areas for many groups of students who said they are looking at ways to help out neighborhood communities by training them to create commercial products from waste बहुत ज्यादा वेस्ट हो रहा है लाइक like टेम्पल्स में हम फूल वूल चढ़ाते हैं हर तरह का फूल चढ़ाते हैं बट वहाँ पे वेस्ट हो रहा होता है वहाँ पे वो सड़ जाता है हमने कोशिश करी कि उस सड़े हुए को उठा के एक चीज काम चीज में लाए जिससे हम कुछ अर्निंग भी कर सके टुडे इज देंटनरी सेलिब्रेशन ऑफ डेली यूनिवर्सिटी एंड प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी वॉज हियर फ्यू आवर्स अगो टॉकिंग टू स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज वसुधा वेणुगोपाल फॉर एन डी विद कैमरा पर्सन जेवियर The Karnataka High Court today dismissed the social media giant Twitter's plea challenging directions of the center to remove some tweets and accounts. The court also imposed 50 lakh uh, as a fine on Twitter citing its conduct. It also refused Twitter's request to stay the operation of the order. Twitter had moved the Karnataka High Court in July last year challenging the blocking orders of the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology calling the orders arbitrary and against the freedom of speech and expression. I will not comment on that I cannot I should not comment on that that is part of the order of the court but certainly I hope uh, there is a learning from uh, this experience of twitter and this behavior of twitter that uh, platforms uh, uh, working with the government of india working with the citizens of india and the consumers of india uh, become responsible platforms work in compliance with the indian law Well, let's quickly move on to some business news. And the market shut shop today at a record high. The Sensex gaining 803 points. It ended at 64,718. The Nifty gained 217 points, ending at 19,189. The Sensex and Nifty up over 5% this year. There was a rally in IT auto stocks, which boosted the markets, which gained following in global peers. The rupee gained uh, two paise against uh, the dollar. Trades around 82 a dollar. The monthly foreign equity investments have been the highest since August last year. Foreign portfolio investments of over 47,000 crore rupees this year, uh, this month alone. 
There's also been a hike in interest rates of small savings schemes. The center has revised the interest for small savings schemes. The interest hiked for a July to September quarter. The interest rates which have been hiked for the next quarter. The interest rate on one year deposits up from 6.8 to 6.9 percent. The interest rate on two year deposits up from 6.9 to 7 percent. The interest rate on five years recurring deposit up 0.3 percent. The center has revised the interest for small saving schemes. The United Nations has now said that France must address deep issues of racial discrimination in its police force after a third consecutive night of violence which was triggered after a 17-year-old teenager was shot dead by the police. Violence sweeps France for the third day following the shooting of a 17-year-old by a policeman in France on Tuesday. Widespread riots as protesters took to the streets, setting town centers, cranes and other public infrastructure on fire. The mother of the teenage victim said she doesn't blame the police force, but just one person, the one who took the life of her son. The accused police officer has apologized to the boy's family and is being probed for homicide. Protesters say this is yet another instance of indiscriminate use of force by the police and want justice for Nihal. French President Emmanuel Macron cut short his official trip to Belgium to chair a second crisis meeting on the violence in France. Bureau Report, NDTV.